Okay, in this uh, video, just looking at the uh, catalyst converter, uh, we're also going to look at uh, how we remove sulfur uh, pollutants um, from flue gases. Okay, so this picture here shows us what a catalyst converter looks like. Um, these are usually just uh, fitted to the underside of cars uh, just before the uh, exhaust pipe. Um, a few things that we need to know for our chemistry exam. Uh, the it's a catalytic converter, so that means it's got a catalyst inside. The catalyst is usually a mixture of uh, precious metals such as palladium, platinum, rhodium, sometimes iridium. Uh, you do need to recall uh, at least one of these, uh, so I would say palladium or platinum, um, if you can. Also, uh, inside the catalytic converter in here, there are many small channels that look like this. And we're talking there are thousands of these small channels probably uh, about half a centimeter um, in height and width um, <clears throat> the catalyst is coated on the inside of these tiny channels so this gives us uh, a, a high surface area for uh, for the reaction to occur because the gas uh, molecules are, are forced down these small little channels and this is the main equation you need to recall uh, from the catalytic converter where carbon monoxide which is toxic uh, reacts with nitrogen oxide to form uh, carbon dioxide and nitrogen although carbon dioxide is greenhouse gas it is um, uh, less hazardous to human health uh, than carbon monoxide and similarly nitrogen monoxide remember nitrogen itself is not a greenhouse gas how do the catalytic converters work? Uh, they are hard, so they're heterogeneous catalysts. They uh, use ad adsorption. The reaction occurs, and then there is desorption. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, these terms, and then there's a quick animation. Uh, the heterogeneous catalyst. Um, what this means is hetero means different. So we've got different physical phases. Uh, between our catalyst and our reactants. So in this case, our catalyst is a solid, the reactants are gases. If it was a homogeneous catalyst, the reactants and the catalyst would be in the same physical state, which would usually is a, a liquid state for a homogeneous catalyst. Okay, but in the catalyst converter, it's heterogeneous. There is adsorption. It is not a spelling mistake, it is adsorption. So um, here the reactant molecules sit and make weak bonds on the surface of the catalyst. So they're not being absorbed into the catalyst, they're sitting on the surface of the catalyst. Um, <clears throat> once the reaction molecules are aligned, um, then the catalyst will weaken the bonds, i.e. they provide an alternative pathway with a lower activation energy. Uh, and so the reaction between the molecules can occur. Uh, after the reaction, we have desorption. So this is the um, opposite of adsorption. Now, don't fall into the trap. It's not desorption of the reactants. No, it's desorption of the products from the surface of the catalyst. Sometimes people lose marks by uh, thinking, oh, it's the opposite of them entering the catalyst. It's the... Uh, but it's not, it's the products that leave the surface of the catalyst. Okay, so here's an example of um, the enthalpy profile diagram. So again, for the uncatalyzed reaction between the carbon monoxide and nitrogen monoxide, we've got a very large activation energy here, um, which is too uh, great to overcome. But if we use a catalyst, then we can use these smaller little activation energies for the three different steps we see. Overall, the enthalpy change um, is the same. Uh, it doesn't matter about if you used a catalyst or not. The enthalpy change is still the same. It's the difference in enthalpy between the reactants and the products. Um, so that's the, the top equation is the most common equation you'll be asked about. Uh, here's a second one. Um, but again, I'd like to see you be able to work that out in an exam. And finally, this equation here, uh, this tends to occur in uh, diesel type cars. Okay. 
Okay, so here's just a quick animation just describing it, the reaction. So the adsorption on the surface of our heterogeneous catalyst occurs with our reactant molecules appearing together. Uh, we have our reaction taking place via this alternative pathway and then we have desorption where the products are being released from the surface of the catalyst. Um, okay, so pollution from power stations. Um, so some fossil some fossil fuels, particularly coal, um, has a lot of sulfur containing compounds trapped um, inside it. Um, <clears throat> and so so whilst we're talking that that the sulfur is kind of like you know less than 0.1 percent of the mass of a, like a lump of coal because of the vast quantity of coal that is being um, uh, burned then the actual amount of sulfur uh, presence actually accumulates and builds up now the issue is um, is that sulfur will burn uh, a corp or combust in oxygen to form sulfur dioxide <coughs> and hopefully you've seen the previous video on air quality uh, where we'll see that if untreated it will uh, react with water and oxygen in the atmosphere to form sulfuric acid okay now here's uh, a picture from a uh, power station these chimneys here are called uh, the flues and so the gases uh, released by these chimneys are called flue gases okay and so this um, so the next two reactions we're going to see um, are for flue gas desulfurization i.e. we're going to take the sulfur out of the gases from the chimney okay so method number one you can use uh, a slurry of calcium oxide. Calcium oxide has got a very low solubility in water, so you basically you make um, it's almost like a paste uh, with the calcium oxide, um, and you spray this into the gases as they are, are occur as they are being emitted upwards. This causes uh, the formation of calcium sulfite. Uh, which is not very really useful in itself, but it can be oxidized with oxygen to make calcium sulfate. Calcium sulfate uh, can be then sold on as gypsum, which is used to make uh, plaster for uh, for building work, you know, the plaster you have on your walls. Uh, you do need to know this equation of sulfur dioxide, it's two molecules of water, uh, a calcium oxide, and half a molecule of oxygen to form calcium sulfate uh, dot two waters. What this means is that the calcium sulfate formed has two water molecules uh, trapped in its crystal structure. Alternatively you could just use uh, sol solid calcium sulfate so have a like um, a mesh it's like almost like a sieve um, and the gases are forced up through this sieve but on top of the sieve, you've got your lumps of your calcium carbonate. Um, <coughs> this equation is slightly simpler uh, to recall. So you've got sulfur dioxide plus calcium carbonate plus oxygen again, uh, which converts our calcium sulfite directly to calcium sulfate. The downside to this process, though, is that it um, uh, causes the release of carbon dioxide. Okay, so hopefully from the two videos, on uh, air quality and the catalytic converter you now have an understanding of these different areas um, and if you do not please come and ask thank you for watching